so many Jewish people, including me, didn't fully understand that the Mosaic Covenant was never going to be eternal. Mm. It was there for a reason, to provide Israel with all they needed until the fullness of time when the Mashiach would come. Jesus. Hey friends, welcome back. I hope you've been enjoying our video series with Carol Joseph, I surely have. As a Jew, you may have heard that Jesus is not for the Jews. We have Moses and the law that was given to us on Mount Sinai. We're just fine without Jesus. However, as hundreds of thousands of Jewish people all around the world have and are putting their faith in Jesus as the Jewish Messiah, this conclusion needs to be reevaluated. As the Jewish community of Jewish believers in Jesus grows worldwide, we can no longer avoid and deny that something is stirring in the hearts of Jewish people as they search for meaning and answers that they aren't finding in religion and legalism. Today, Carol Joseph will be discussing why our Jewish people so desperately need Jesus Yeshua and why the law of Moses cannot give us the relationship and salvation that we need with God. Hey, Carol, I'm, re I'm really enjoying this conversation. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm really enjoying it myself. Yes, I don't, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I was told not to believe in Jesus. Um, I wasn't really given any other reasons than just Jews don't believe in Jesus. But I wasn't warned not to believe in, in Buddha or the Hindu gods, or I wasn't warned against self-worship. Um, just don't believe in Jesus. Uh, that, was really, that was really it. Honestly, that kept me away from Jesus for about four decades, actually. Um, but one of the more common reasons Jewish people give is that we have Moses and the law and Christians have Jesus. We have ours, they have theirs, leave us alone. <laughs> I mean, I've heard that actually here on the streets of Israel. However, you say that everyone, including the Jewish people need Jesus and that the law of Moses isn't what is bringing us reconciliation and relationship with God. So can you explain why the law of Moses isn't enough for the Jewish people and why we need Jesus? Uh -huh. Yes, that's a, that's a very, very big question. Yeah. And I want to be able to communicate this in a way that makes sense to people. I love history. I love history. And I love the history of Christianity and the history of Judaism. And I especially love the first century history of when the two faiths were really growing up together. They're more like sibling faiths than one mother, daughter, or father, son. Because the Jewish, the, the Jewish faith and the Mosaic Covenant in the Hebrew Scriptures came to a, a shocking end in 70 AD with the destruction of the temple. At that point, we don't have the law of Moses anymore. We don't have the, the temple. We don't have the sacrifices. We don't have the offerings. We don't have anything that we the things that we need to fulfill the law of Moses. And I have understood that that law was given as a temporary covering for Israel until something else would come, mm -hmm. in Jer particularly in Jeremiah. And I'm shocked at how few people, how few Jewish people I know are familiar with Jeremiah 31, 31, right. where, the, where God speaks through the prophet telling Israel, the days are coming when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This is what I love. And it won't be like the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them. And then it goes on and says, but this is the covenant I will make with them. After those days, I will put my law within them and on their hearts I will write it and I will be their God and they will be my people. So many Jewish people, including me, until long after I even became a believer in Jesus, didn't fully understand that the Mosaic Covenant was never going to be eternal. Mm. It was there for a reason, to provide Israel with all they needed until the fullness of time when the Mashiach would come, Jesus. Mm. And so it's not surprising to me that Jesus came and the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. And for those 40 years between his death and the destruction of the temple, those two faiths were side by side. Because remember, all of the first believers in Jesus were Jewish. Mm -hmm. 
they all still continued to go to the temple. They all, you know, there was a lot. If you read the the history in the book of Acts and you read the letters, there was a lot of trying to understand how this all made sense and what we were to do now, mm -hmm. uh, even while the temple was standing. But what we know, and what one of my favorite periods in Jewish history is studying the, the work that happened at Yavna among the Pharisees predominantly after the temple was destroyed. Because the Sadducees, who are all about the temple worship and the national and corporate worship of Israel, their role pretty much disappeared when the temple right. was no more. But the rabbis, the Pharisees, their role kind of was elevated. And so when I have studied that that time period in Jewish history and that uh, the beginning of what we call rabbinic Judaism, that is no longer the Mosaic Covenant. It's very, very different. Mm -hmm. So instead of sacrifice, there are prayers offered. The Amidah is offered at the morning and the evening to replace the sacrifices that are supposed to be made. So the, so the reality is the believers in Yeshua were working to establish who they were at the very same time that the, that the remnant of Jews that came after the temple was trying to figure out how to maintain Judaism at that time. They were mm. both in the same time period. But the reality is that God, if you read the Mosaic Covenant, the temple was essential to have relationship with God and to have uh, that covering. And I love that, that the word even for Yom Kippur is the day of covering, the day of atonement. And atonement is the key. How do we make atonement for our sin? Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. That was true from the beginning. Right. Well, some arguments that I get um, sometimes in the comments is that, no, um, it says in our Hebrew scriptures that all we need to do is turn back to God and he will forgive us. Well, not quite that simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, you know, I mean, you can pull out a verse that says that. Sure. But then you yeah, can pull out the verse that says in Leviticus that, that, you, that um, I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your sins. For it is the yeah. blood, a reason of the life that makes atonement. Without that, 11, yeah. without that blood sacrifice, which is very interesting because when Jesus died, that was a blood sacrifice. That's just right. what the new covenant says, that Jesus right. was the fulfillment of that. It That's wasn't right. replacement. It wasn't a new religion. It right. wasn't so, always planned. Go ahead. Right. And so after the shedding of his blood, there was a 40-year period um, between that and the destruction of the second temple. And so if we read um, uh, Jewish um, writings, if we read some of our, our Talmud, um, mm -hmm. I think it, it's, it talks about what was happening during that 40-year period. Would you like to tell us uh, some of the things that were going on in the temple those days? You had something in your mind that you wanted to bring out. I did, I did. Well, I mean... There well, it, it was a it was apparent that God was no longer accepting the sacrifices of the oh, people during right, that period right, of time, right. mm -hmm. and so there were certain things that that were done upon sacrifice, sending out the scapegoat with the, with the uh, scarlet uh, thread ribbon. and yeah, the, the thread. scarlet ribbon, yes, and the and the door the temple doors and and certain things that that were typical to let the the Jewish people know that their sacrifices were. Uh, accepted and that their sins were forgiven for that period of time. And those things stopped happening. Exactly. Yeah. Not a surprise to me. Right. Those things right. stopped happening. Yes. <laughs> and so um and so the temple was destroyed and in seventy AD and there was this um there was a group that had that had uh, gathered at Yavnet. And over the next 20 years, basically set out what rabbinic Judaism would be, kind of that framework for rabbinic Judaism. It's where the Passover Haggadah became ordered. Mm -hmm. It's where the Shabbat temple service became ordered and where all of the practices that have grown. I mean, obviously, there's been much more added over the years through the Talmud, 
But it's very interesting that the Talmud has has proclaimed itself to be the oral law given to Moses with the same authority as the written law. But there's nothing in the Torah that indicates that. Right, right. And we're going to talk about that in the, in the next segment. And that's huge. That's one of my favorite topics, actually. I'm studying a lot about that that right now. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that as well. Okay. Um, but yes, as, as we're going along, um, we realize that through Jeremiah 31, 31, we realize that there's supposed to be a new covenant. And I think that if you look at this, this fracture between uh, Messianic Judaism and religious Judaism in the first century, this split, and I like the way I liked how you called them sibling, um, religions, basically, um, that um, the the messianic uh, faith seemed like a logical a continuation of biblical Judaism for those who believed. Right, right, right. And, and right, and those that didn't, they had to formulate a religion without the Messiah, without the temple altar and sacrifice. Exactly, and one that would exclude anyone that did right no there are the 18 benedictions the 18 blessings and then they added a 19th right to keep out anybody that 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 essentially believed in jesus right so the split happened then and it became more pronounced after the bar kokhba revolution revolt in 135 i think somewhere Mm -hmm. around there where Rabbi Akiva proclaimed um, Bar Kokhba the Messiah, and the believers in Jesus wouldn't fight. Right. They couldn't. He wasn't the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. That was the final break between the two faiths. And sadly, it has become even more pronounced over the, over the, the centuries and over the generations partly because of the history of Christianity and yes. some of the some of the stains on on our history with regard to the Jewish people so that most Jewish people today are taught from early on that about the Crusades about the Holocaust about the Inquisition done at the hands of, of so-called Christians right. um, misinformed Christians but today we know that, that that was not what Jesus had intended, but for all to come to faith. And yet there is an enemy who wants nothing more than to divide and steal and kill. That's right. That's right. Wow. Well, if you, if you have any questions out there, feel, please feel free to leave them in the comment section for, for, for myself, for Carol. Um, and we would love to, to comment on those and, and really, um, your, your, Opinions are very important, um, but we just want to emphasize that um, um, Jesus uh, is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, and that um, as God promised in Jeremiah 31 that he will bring a new covenant to the house of Judah and the house of Israel, not like the covenant that he made with our fathers when he brought us out of Egypt, um, that we encourage you to look into the New Testament, the new covenant, and, uh, and see for yourself what it says in there. So thank you so much, Carol, for, for explaining all of that. You're welcome. To find out more about Carol and her work, click on the link below in the description and stay tuned for our next episode where Carol will be discussing the true meaning of Torah. What really is Torah and why it's not what many people have thought it to be over the centuries. It's one of my favorite topics and one I can't wait to get into. To find out more about Jews for Jesus, you can visit us and even chat with us anonymously at our website, JewsForJesus.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And may you all find peace and hope in our Messiah, Yeshua.